Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and the original intent of today's video was to be a continuation of my response to Antonio Zamora's Carolina Bay's Time of Emplacement video. But after getting into it a little bit more, I've decided to make this a standalone video uh, titled Carolina Bay's The Tale of Two Impacts. And I did put a question mark at the end there, uh, and I hope that you'll see why by the end of this video. And so just, again, this is kind of a kind of a combination video, but just to recap, in my most recent video, I systematically went through Antonio's requirement list for Carolina Bay emplacement to show that the Younger Dryas isn't the only possible formation date for the Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins. Um, in fact, when you pair the marine oxygen isotope data collected from the Greenland and Antarctic uh, ice cores with ancient east coast shorelines, we find that the bays uh, must be much, much older, uh, possibly even 60 times older than, than the Younger Dryas. Um, if you haven't seen my videos on the Paleo-Atlantic shorelines yet, feel free to click on the link above uh, before continuing on. It'll, it'll help make all of this more sense. Now, I ended my last video by saying there was one thing Zamora mentioned in his emplacement video that had me scratching my head when it was all said and done. And that is the presence of Carolina Bays on Long Island, New York. Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a look at a few of these here in a few minutes. Uh, but first, we need to understand how Long Island was formed. You know, sometime uh, between 18 and 20,000 years ago, the Laurentide Ice Sheet was at its peak in this area during the Wisconsin glaciation and extended down all the way along with all of its glacial till uh, that was piled up in front of it uh, to this area right here. You know, that included boulders and grit and dust and all the, all the glacial till that, that came along with it. Now, once the glacier retreated, the mounds of till were abandoned, uh, forming these two terminal moraines. You know, the Harbor Hill Moraine and the Ronkonkoma Moraine. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so if there are indeed bays in this glacial till, then they have to be older than 18,000 years, right? You know, remember, if, if the bays are the result of a glacial cosmic impact, then they would all have to have been formed at the same time. So this obviously poses a problem. You know, the Paleo-Atlantic shorelines suggest an age older than 400,000 years. But any bays in these moraines suggest an age younger than 18,000 years. So, so which one is it? Which is it going to be? Well, let's take a look at a few of these Long Island, New York bays uh, to see if we can come up with a few, with a few answers. Now, I, I will probably follow this video up with a, a Google Earth virtual field trip at some point uh, just to kind of kind of show you where we're at and, you know, using the globe itself. Uh, but for the time being, let's go ahead and look at uh, some still images uh, that I took off of Google Earth um, of these bays and examine them using LIDAR as well. So here's a screenshot I took of a grouping of bays uh, on Long Island. Um, they're right in this area right here. And uh, as you can see right away, that this terrain is different from the North and South Carolina terrain, you know, where we see so many well-defined Carolina bays. Uh, but let me go ahead and click on the LiDAR so that we can see uh, the shapes a little bit better. You can see that these, uh, these bays don't quite have the same shape and uh, don't even really fit the axle orientation as set by Michael Davis. Uh, there are some over here um, that didn't even get marked, like this one right here and there's one right here. Um, probably because of their more northerly direction to their axis. You know, they didn't quite fit the mold. They didn't fit the pattern. Um, but let's take, a, let's take a look at a few more. And um, yeah, okay, again, you know, so just by using the satellite imagery, it is hard to see any bays in this area of Long Island. Uh, but there are a few uh, in this area right here. Uh, let's go and click on the LiDAR. There we go. You can see them better when you click on that LiDAR. But once again, you know, that LiDAR really does help out. And we can see that the bays here have more of a circular shape to them and don't quite fit that same orientation profile of the other bays farther south, like in North and South Carolina. You know, we also see that a few, um, we also see that there are a few more bays here that uh, were not marked. You know, like I think these bays right here, I think these are bays here that aren't really marked. Uh, but that's, you know, that's fine. It just, they, they, you know, just don't quite have that same, same pattern. Okay, and then let's look at uh, let's take a look at one more grouping of bays here on Long Island, New York. Uh, and for these, you really kind of do need to see the lidar to make them out. 
Um, I think there's one right here. Let's check. Yep. Okay. So I think there's one here, possibly one here, maybe one here, uh, another one here. But you know, these are these are much harder to pick out. But one of the things that I noticed uh, here is that they really do kind of remind me of bays that I have seen before, um, but they're much farther south. And let's take a look at those real quick. You know, now this area is all the way down closer to where I live in South Georgia. And actually, I focused on this area um, in my very first video on Carolina Bays because it's the very first place that I was exposed to them. Um, you know, here's Adel, Adel, Georgia, uh, right here. That's just north of Valdosta. This is I-75. And if you just keep going down, you'll end up in, in Valdosta. Um, and so, and again, you see a lot of farmland and stuff here. But when I click to the LIDAR, you can see the area has has lots of Carolina Bays, some that are much, much bigger. Uh, but we do have some that are smaller, you know, more more comparable to the ones that we saw up in New York. So these, to me anyways, have a very similar shape and orientation to the bays up in Long Island, New York. You know, they are a little more circular in shape and they have more of a northerly direction to their orientation. Um, and so, you know, they, again, there may be a size difference between a few of them, but let's go ahead and take a look at them side by side. And you know, here, you know, you can clearly see how similar they, they really are, you know, and in fact, if, if I were to superimpose these images together, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell them the two apart. Yet they are separated by about 900 miles of distance. So where am I going with this? Remember, this whole process is about connecting the dots. You know, sometimes we have to start over. Sometimes the dots don't fit and we have to start over. And sometimes they're close uh, and we have to kind of try to make them fit. Um, but by doing so, it makes the overall image a little bit messy. Well, do you guys remember a video I put out a little while ago focusing on the Wu et al. paper? Um, that was also a topic of discussion on Randall Carlson's podcast, Cosmography. And it was actually episodes 32 and 33, if you want to go back and listen to those. Um, in the paper, they discuss the Younger Dryas impact proxies collected from a site down in Pennsylvania that has a chemical signature that matches the bedrock of the Quebecia terrain in the Grenville Providence of Northeastern North America. Now that's a very specific location and should be a huge clue. Now in my video, I was making th the connection of this sudden cutoff of bedrock right here um, in relation to a proposed Michigan impact site, right? Uh, you know, Keeping in mind, though, that I made this video before making the connections between the Paleo-Atlantic shorelines and the Carolina Bays. You know, making that connection forced me to push my timeline of emplacement back beyond the Younger Dryas. But the material identified by Wu et al. is linked to the Younger Dryas. And Randall Carlson et al., uh, has linked that material to this location right here, which is now known as Lake or Loch St. John. Right here. Here's Loch St. John right there. And it's actually right here. You can actually see the removed bedrock uh, right here, right there. So what does that tell us? Or at least where is that taking us? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am really starting to think that we are looking at two completely different glacial impact events separated by about 773,000 years. Uh, the first being a much bigger impact, uh, which caused the mid-Pleistocene transition and created the Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins. Keeping in mind that this would have been on top of an ice sheet during a previous ice age. Now, the second being part of a multiple impact event occurring right at the Younger Dryas boundary, which we've been covering quite a bit. One of those younger driest impacts occurred on the Laurentide Ice Sheet over, you know, the now Lock St. John area, uh, just as Randall proposed, creating the lake itself and the Long Island Bays. So, again, if this is an impact here, 786,000 years ago, the, you know, bringing on the mid Pleistocene transition, Carolina Bays all in this area, Nebraska and Rainwater Basins over here, uh, and then, you know, 12,900 years ago, being part of a multiple impact event, one landed right here, uh, smaller, but still, you know, very serious, um, causing, you know, dramatic flooding, you know, across North America and, um, and eventually causing a few Carolina bays in an area that was not covered by glacial ice 
uh, but instead was terminal moraine. Uh, you know, <laughs> lots going on here, but you know, really, what do you guys think? You know, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, you know, down in the comment section below. I know that this is a little rushed. Um, I've been super pressed for time uh, lately. I really had to try to kind of fit this in. Uh, if you are intrigued and in a position to help push this forward, you know, feel free to send me an email at dabblers.den at gmail.com. And once again, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay. All right. Bye.